Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be answering your questions. I posted on YouTube and Instagram asking you guys to ask me any questions that you have. So that's what today's video is. I had a skim through. There's loads just about weight loss, calorie counting, weightlifting, training, exercise, health, fitness, but there's also some uh, more personal questions. So that's what today's video is. If you're interested in anything to do with health, fitness, weight loss, or lifestyle then please be sure to subscribe and click the bell button if you don't know who i am and this is the first video of mine you're watching hello my name is louise i used to be obese and i make i lost 120 pounds and i've been on a weight loss journey i've shared it all on youtube i make lots of videos on my weight loss journey how i lost weight i share my tips i share like my journey in general basically i shared my bikini competition and the prep leading up to that i've shared the prep and the leading up to of my photo shoot and I basically share my muscle building journey, I share everything like that and just lifestyle in general here on the channel so if you're interested in any of that then join the family here on YouTube and if I answered your question or a question that you have and you find any of the answers useful I would really appreciate it if you click that like button all you gotta do is just click the thumbs up it's free and if you're feeling extra generous a little early Christmas present to me guys just click that like button anyway I really appreciate it so we're in my car and Tesco is delivering to my neighbour so that's their Christmas dinner <laughs> So first question, do you use creatine? I have used creatine. I'm not currently using it at the minute. I'm going to just start taking it in January. I've not really been like, I have been training and trying to build muscle and stuff, but I've been a lot more kind of relaxed recently and I've stopped taking creatine. Not for any reason other than the fact that I've just got lazy with it. Creatine has been really helpful and I have used it consistently in the past especially in my prep and for my photo shoot i just haven't been consistent with using it so i haven't been using it recently how many days are you going to be indulging in the christmas goodies oh, i've been indulging in the christmas goodies all december <laughs> can't you tell <laughs> I, I don't indulge as in like every single second i'm eating christmas foods but in the evening i've been having a hot chocolate i've had a mince pie i've had a couple of chocolate coins here and there i've basically just been incorporating it into my my um my day-to-day -day food if that makes sense like i still try and prioritize like my meals and stuff but yeah i have been indulging i've had a, i've had a, more alcohol this month than i have well this year to be fair than i have like ever before not like I've been just drinking out. That sounds like I've just been drinking loads of alcohol. But I've just enjoyed like quite a few cocktails, quite a few glasses of wine, more than like before. Like before, when especially when I was losing weight, I didn't drink alcohol at all. This is awkward because people are walking past and I'm filming in my car. So we're just going to wait for them to walk past. Don't look at me. <laughs> For Christmas Day, for example, I'm going to enjoy Christmas Day. Tonight, I'm going to wrap some Christmas presents and I'm going to get a bottle of wine with Ashley and we're going to wrap and drink some wine. So I guess that's indulging in Christmasness. But basically, I am going to start a cut in January. So I am just eating like normal, basically. Like I'm not trying to be in a calorie deficit or anything over Christmas. And then after Christmas, I'm gonna I'm gonna track more consistently, basically. After Christmas, I'm gonna try and get into just a small calorie deficit, like a very very small one, or even eat maintenance and just like up the cardio a little bit, just to cut a little bit of body fat. So January, I just want to go into a small cut, basically, and cut down on a little bit of body fat because I am feeling a bit puffy, a bit poofy, and yeah, I just want to ha have a little small cut. So that's what that's yeah that, i hope that answered the question anyway i just want to ask what are you doing for christmas so for christmas morning uh obviously i'm having at mine at home the kids are going to open their presents so i know everyone does christmas a bit differently so what i like to do with, with the kids is they open their presents in the morning and i know some people wait until after dinner but we do it like the first thing we wake up yeah we see santa's bean it's exciting we want to get into the presents so i we, we do the presents in the morning. The dad is going to come to watch them open the presents in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to my mum's and we're having Christmas dinner at my mum's and at my sister's and my brother and stuff like that will be there. So I'm just spending Christmas with family, basically. Uh, so that's what I'm doing for Christmas. Let me know, guys, what you're doing for Christmas. What's your Christmas traditions? Do you open your presents before or after dinner? I want to know because some people have to wait all the way till after dinner and I think that's a bit long. But I guess it drags out Christmas Day. But they, when they go to my mum's, they open more presents there as well. So it's like it's still spread out. Do you exercise even though you are sore? Yeah. But 
I try not to like if I'm my my soreness is like very 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 sore say my legs are really sore I will try and train upper or something like that like if you're so sore that I can't really get a good workout in you want to train you want you know it's not a bad thing to be sore but it's not necessarily a good thing if that makes sense like you're going to be sore if you're starting a new training program or if you've like lifted a bit heavier or progressively overloaded but if you're like so sore that you can't move that's kind of not great like by the time your next leg session is or your arm session or whatever is sore you want to be kind of recovered enough to train as hard as you can that time but if i if my legs are a little bit sore and it's leg day i'll push through it but if it's like really really sore then i'll let them rest another day and i'll just like swap something else like upper do you feel comfortable with what your breasts look like post diet i have successfully lost 20 to 30 pounds in the past i have since gained everything back and more and of course the first thing to go with my breasts i feel you baby i feel you i was pretty insecure about it since they were just flat Thanks for being an open book, Louise, and much deserved congratulations on your road to health. Oh, thank you. Um, do I feel comfortable with what my breasts look like post diet? No. I'm not gonna lie, no. I've lost my boobs as well. I used to have really big boobs. I've always grown up with like really big boobs. Like I developed quite early when I was a teenager. So like my boobs were like really big, yeah. I was like, I had the biggest boobs out of all my friends. And I just had I was just blessed with big boobs. And then when I got pregnant and I breastfed, my boobs were massive i had i had biggest boobs ever and uh yeah i lost weight and my boobs went as well but we're like they only went i feel like when i was losing weight like my boobs they were shrinking a bit but they didn't go flat it's just like the leaner i got the less boobs i had and i've noticed that as well like when i was like before my competition i basically had nothing there um and now i'm gaining a bit of weight over christmas i've, I've put on a bit of body fat my butt is getting bigger and my boobs are getting a little bit more filled out but then so is the waist that's the problem like the waist is also getting thicker like why can't it just go to the boobs and the bum and not the waist do you know what i mean so no i'm not i'm not comfortable with my boobs i won't lie like i'm i don't it doesn't bother me to the point where like Every day I wake up and I'm depressed about it and like I'm like, oh, I, I wish I had boobs. Mm, nah, it's just, it's not, it's not like that. But I would just like to have, it just feels more feminine to have like bigger boobs, like at least some boobs. I have the, like right now where I've gained a bit of weight, they're, they're the smallest little, little, uh, you could cup it a little bit. They, they're a little bit cute, but I know when I start losing weight again, they're going to go. It's just... It's just unfortunate, but at the same time, like, it's not that much of a big thing. But I have noticed that I have built, like, obviously chest muscle. And it almost, like, makes you appear to have bigger boobs, if that makes sense. Like, because, obviously, your chest muscles are under your boobs, so it goes like that. And then also, like, you get the chest line there. And it gives me a little bit of a cleavage. Or maybe I'm delusional when I think it looks like I've got cleavage. Either way, it's made me feel better. So build up your chest muscles, maybe. It's like a cheaper way of than, rather than getting a boob job. But other than a boob job, I'm not going to have boobs. Hi, Louise. Thank you for your videos. How did you solve buying and changing clothes when your body transforms so much? When did you see clo change in clothes sizes, both, lo both losing weight and building muscle? Thank you. Loving your channel. I bought a set of like a couple of outfits for working out, like when I first started. And then I didn't like I kept the same clothes like I didn't buy clothes like as soon as like I lost like a dress size like I didn't buy new clothes straight away I was wearing like baggy clothes for a while and especially I was kind of lucky because it was like lockdown times after I by the time I'd like lost quite a bit of weight it was like lockdown times and we was at home most of the time anyway so I was like just in chilling clothes most of the time and, like I didn't really care that the clothes looked a bit baggy but I would say like I probably bought my f I was buying new clothes probably around four or five months after lose like into my weight loss and yeah I just I just tried to stick with that and let them go a bit baggy before I bought new set of clothes because I knew I wasn't at my goal yet so I didn't want to like go crazy and buy loads and loads of clothes so I just tried to work with what I had if that makes sense and like if it looked a little bit baggy then oh, to be honest I'm not gonna lie after having clothes always being tight and stuff having it a little bit baggy wasn't a bad thing like I felt good wearing like a bit I was like oh this is a little bit too big for me <laughs> I didn't mind it being a little bit baggy so I I didn't start buying like loads of new outfits until after the year after I'd lost all the weight that I wanted to lose and then um when I was building muscle and stuff like throughout maintenance my body has changed so much like where I've built muscle and stuff so my clothes sizes has changed a bit but not too much like I'm ranging between a size 
I've ranged since I've lost weight and I've maintained it. The smallest I got was like a size eight, maybe like for prep, I was a size six, six to eight. And then the highest I will go is a size like 12, so 10 to 12. So I'm basically, my wardrobe has still got all the clothes that I had from prep because when I go into like um, a cart and stuff, I, I pretty much fit into a size eight to 10 anyway. Definitely not a six. It's, oh. The sixes, they've gone. I'm not ever getting to that small size again, unless I do another prep. Over time, basically, I've just bought clothes. Um, and I found it quite fun, to be fair, like just experimenting with like new styles and stuff and finding what like suits me, what I like, and like suits my new, bod my new body. <laughs> How do you stay motivated when you're not seeing results? Slash before you can see the results. It's, it's hard when you've not got the results yet, but I what I did when I first started was I pictured what it would what I would feel like when I'd lost the weight so like I knew that me carrying on me pushing myself through this workout through this day of just eating in a calorie deficit saying no to them cravings when I felt like overeating or when I got emotional and I wanted to overeat I'd think okay but how will I feel if I push through this and when I get to my goal weight and like like not even my goal weight because I didn't even have a weight in mind I just remember thinking like when I've lost weight how am I going to feel and how worth it is it going to be if that makes sense and I I would just always picture that and that got me through it just like thinking about that so that that's all I can say is like just think about how, like the future try and stop going for the instant gratification like what you want in that moment and try and put yourself into the future if that makes sense do actions now that will be so much more rewarding in the future I don't know how how else to explain it but just think of the future you and do it for her because she will thank you she will look back and be like I'm so glad she never gave up like I never gave up and then also other tips I can give is consume weight loss content consume health and fitness content almost get obsessed with it in a way like not obsessed as in like that's the only thing you're interested in but that's another thing that I was into when I first started losing weight I was always watching like youtubers like obese to beast greg doucette that was always talking about like weight loss and health and fitness and like educate yourself and that's one thing about me is when i'm interested in something i learn every single thing there is to to know about it and i almost do get obsessed with it and that's how i was at the beginning of my journey was i was just constantly looking at like health and fitness content weight loss content learning about nutrition learning about new foods learning about calories and like how the body works how the body loses fat like because when I was losing fat I got really into like where does the fat go and like all of this stuff and I was just like learning about it and I become like almost obsessed not obsessed unhealthily if that makes sense but just wanted to know everything there was about it and it kept me really motivated because it was just what I was into and interested in at the time. That's all I can say as well. Like another tip is to just like educate yourself on weight loss, on health and fitness, on some exercises, on new foods. And then, and then like, yeah, just follow people that inspire and motivate you. How did you deal with the cravings or desire to eat slash overeat? You know, the finding yourself crying in the closet because the temptation of overeating is so strong and you don't really want to go back to the old you who eats the entire bag of junk food. I would say to try and keep yourself busy. So instead of like crying in the closet, try and get out. If, if for example, like your something's triggered you or whatever reason you want to just overeat and you know it's not because you're hungry, it's just because of a, out of an emotion and you're finding yourself like splitting hairs like I'm gonna overeat or whatever just get out if you can and go for a walk listen to some music I find that really therapeutic I always listen to music it's like my thing I just put my earphones in listen to music watch some videos like anything that like calms you down um go for a nice walk because one that's exercise but two it helps like regulate you as well for me anyway it helps regulate me and make me feel more calm and you're also taking yourself away from it if you can go out without your purse so you're not going to the shop and buying food <laughs> try to keep your trigger foods like foods that make you feel like that because it's just there and there's only so much your willpower can take having it there before you try and want to eat it if that makes sense so try not to have those trigger foods in the house in the first place try to sit with the feelings that you have that bring you to the point of wanting to overeat so say if you notice every time like you get stressed out or you get anxious or you're angry or you're sad or you're lonely or you're bored try to notice the emotion that you feel 
before you get to that point of wanting to eat, if that makes sense. I say like, you feel like, oh, I just want to go in the cupboards and eat. Try and take a step back and think like, what emotion am I feeling right now? Like, what has happened or what am I feeling in my body? Like, do a little full body scan and think like, where where am I feeling this feeling from? Where has it come from? Why am I feeling like this? And just try to sit with it. Don't overthink on why you're feeling like that necessarily but just feel it and try and focus like I've I've been learning how to do this it's like you go into your body if that makes sense and like you scan your body and feel the feelings that you're feeling and instead of because it's an uncomfortable feeling what we like to do is when we're an emotional eater instead of feeling the feeling because it's uncomfortable we distract ourselves and we haven't found a healthy coping mechanism for the emotions so what we've found is by eating it's distracting us because we're we're, we're doing something else with our, our body we're tasting food we're eating and it's distracting us temporarily from the emotion that we're feeling but the thing is we finish eating and then we tend to feel worse because we've overeaten we probably feel guilty because we've broken our diet we're stuffed and now we're actually in a worse position than what we were before. So what you do is like take yourself out of that situation. Take a step back. Go for a walk if you if you feel like you need to get out. And then do a full body scan. Feel your body. Feel where the emotion is. And just kind of like go deep into that feeling. For example, like are you feeling it in your chest, in your stomach? Uh, feel whether, like what does it feel like? Is it heavy? What if it has a colour? Like try and envision it. Envision it and like does the emotion have a colour? Is it thick? Is it where is it? Is it spreading from my stomach to my legs? Am I feeling it in my hands? Like I know it sounds silly, but you have to really kind of visualize it and feel it and just go deep into that feeling. And what you'll notice is the more you do that, the easier that feeling just flows through you and then you feel more calm and then you lose the desire to overeat, if that makes sense. That's what's worked for me. It's a form of like meditation, mindfulness, and that's really helped me. So I thought I would share that. What are your go-to meals slash snacks when you want to binge? I don't ever really want to binge, to be honest, especially anymore. The only times I've had strong urges to binge was after my competition. Um, when I was very lean, I was at a very low body fat and I was very very hungry and what I did was I would allow myself to eat like I would allow myself to eat but I made it more lower calorie dense food so I, I had fruits vegetables high protein snacks um so I would make like a massive bowl of salad I would allow myself to eat as much fruit as I can like as I wanted to basically until I felt satiated fat-free Greek yogurt uh jelly pots um just because I didn't want to like regain loads and loads of weight straight away like just because I know that that can trigger body dysmorphia and I just didn't want to regain like go on a like gain too much body fat straight after the show I wanted to like slowly gain the body fat back so that my mind had enough chance to catch up with my body so I would eat low calorie dense foods and if I am really hungry now and I've eaten all my calories then yeah I'll go for things like sugar-free jelly fat-free greek yogurt anything with protein jerky egg whites like french toast fruits vegetables anything that's like got quite a lot of fiber or protein it's just going to help keep you full and if you don't feel like eating that say you're like you really want to binge yeah you're hungry you just want to eat loads of food but you're like mm, i don't really want to eat fruit though or i don't really want to eat i don't know veg or i don't really feel for this and it's like you know that feeling when you're like i'm hungry but I don't feel for that and you're like trying to figure out what you feel for you're not hungry at that point that's emotional hunger so then you have to sit through and do the full body scan and think about your emotions or sometimes sometimes I feel like you can be hungry for just chocolate or dessert or something but you don't necessarily need it you're not going to die without a piece of chocolate but if you feel for a bit of chocolate instead of just saying no to having a little bit of chocolate because that's more likely to lead to you than overeating chocolate in, in the end either make a high protein chocolate dessert like fat free greek yogurt you can get like the chocolate protein mousses or just have a little bit of chocolate and is it far better than 
avoiding it completely and then overeating on it. Really appreciate your channel. We have very similar body types and it's so motivating to see your results. I am already seeing some loose skin on myself and I have a decent amount of stretch marks too. I'm nervous to get close to anyone because of this. How do you approach your skin and stretch marks when it comes to dating? Sorry if this is too personal. Thanks. Firstly, I want to say well done on your weight loss. That's amazing. And loose skin is a sign of weight loss, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? It's like your little badge of honour. Think of it like that. But I would say... The first step is to accept it yourself because you can't ex expect someone else to accept it if you can't, can't accept it yourself, if that makes sense. So try to accept the loose skin and the stretch marks as just a part of your body, as a part of like your journey. They're just signs of what your body has been through, if that makes sense, what you've done to achieve the body you're now in. I have loads of stretch marks, like literally I was looking at it today, like all over my stomach, or even on my, my chest here, the backs of my arms, on my arms, on my legs. I have stretch marks everywhere. They're like basically white now, so they're not like that noticeable and they're not like really, really thick ones, but I have like loads, like even like up here, like just everywhere I have them. And obviously I have loose skin, you guys seen my loose skin videos on my channel so i do have that as well i would just say like for me it's a little bit different because i have videos and i show i've basically i feel like i'm very open with the fact that i've got stretch marks on loose skin i've lost a lot of weight i've got pictures of me and my bar because when i was like obese i it's, it's pretty much out there yeah if anyone is gonna see it they're gonna see it so i mean it's pretty pretty obvious for me but obviously i know you're not gonna have um your, you might not have videos of your loose skin or stretch marks on your Instagram, say. So what I would do in your situation is, I'm guessing when you're dating someone, you're going to be open to them eventually and say that, you know, you've lost weight or you're in the middle of losing weight or at some point disclose that you was overweight. So I feel like a lot of people are aware enough to know that if you've been at least pretty big, or overweight you're gonna have at least some stretch marks and weight loss does result in some loose skin it's up to you whether you want to say that i've got a bit of loose skin you can maybe like i don't know make it a joke not a joke but like i wouldn't be like okay i just want to let you know i've got a little bit of loose skin. i would make a joke out of it and be like do you know i'm like elastic girl like i've got stretchy skin like i'm a super i'm a super woman <laughs> i would make a joke out of it or like, i don't know and then just I feel like it's not that much of a big deal. I feel like we make it a bigger deal ourselves. And just wear stuff that you feel comfortable and confident in and be confident and comfortable in yourself. And if the person you're dating doesn't like it or doesn't accept it, that's fine. That's their their choice, if that makes sense. Like they don't have to love and accept it. But that means that they're there not for you. So see you later. So I would say like maybe don't wait too long for them to find out about it because then you're investing your emotions and your feelings into that person for them to then possibly turn around and not like it and then you're the one who's ended up hurt because you've invested something into them so maybe like sh disclose it in a way earlier on rather than later but then it's also your decision whether you'd want to anyway and I feel like the right person for you wouldn't worry or be upset about it if that makes sense like it's not going to bother them at which point do you did you start prioritizing muscle building over weight loss like I know both were always important but when did the shift happen I would say after I actually lost 120 pounds I started maintaining I'd say a few months after I started maintaining I realized that I actually really wanted to just change my body composition and build muscle so weight loss was no longer a priority because I'd already lost the weight so up until I actually lost all of my 120 pounds, my main focus was the weight loss. And then once I'd lost the weight, then it shifted to muscle building. Would you ever consider being a PT? Absolutely love your videos. You're so inspirational. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you. And I have definitely thought about it. It is something that I do want to do, but I don't know whether... I feel like I've... I don't know, like... I want to become a personal trainer because I want to train people, but at the same time, I don't know if that's my calling. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I want to do something along them lines, but I just, I feel like if it was for me, I would be feel passionate about it and I'd, I would have done it by now. I don't know whether that's, that's my calling, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like whether a personal trainer, like a one-to-one -one kind of training in the gym is for me or if maybe online coaching would be better or a life coach like I am looking into that kind of stuff but I want to do something when I do something like that I want to be 100% into it and passionate about it I don't want to be like half-assed with it I'm not like a half-assed person like if I 
want to do something, I'm going to be 100% in. Can you please do a video on how to create a personal four day workout routine for someone who's been working at home but wants to transition to the gym or is new to the gym? Thank you. I can do a video on it, but I'll just do a quick little like breakdown of what I would do now if that makes sense so four days if it was me what i would suggest is an upper lower body split so if you've only got four days of the week to train if your goal is to just build muscle everywhere and you're new to the gym and you've not got a specific body part to work on i would say splitting the workouts into upper lower body splits so say you can only train on a monday tuesday thursday and friday for example monday would be like legs get that out of the way first <laughs> tuesday upper Wednesday rest, Thursday legs, Friday upper. So I would suggest to do, I would say about five to seven exercises for your legs and for your upper. Maybe for your legs, yeah, yeah, five to, five, five to seven exercises. And then three to four sets of, I would say, if you're just starting out, 10 to 12 reps, or you could even go up to 15 reps if you're first starting out. Try to make the workout routine well-rounded if that makes sense so find a couple of exercises for your quads a couple of exercises for your hamstrings a couple of exercises for your glutes and try to like fit at least like one or two of each of them into that leg workout for example write it down and be consistent with it keep a record of the weights you're using so that you know where you're at and when you've you can increase it if that makes sense like you know where to increase from what you last did and you can kind of increase weight a little bit so you could progressively overload if someone lose 100 pounds how to avoid loose skin tell us with your experience any pre preventative measures kindly you can't really avoid loose skin especially if you're going to lose 100 pounds you're going to get some loose skin uh i would just say i mean i've got loose skin anyway i feel like people think i don't have loose skin i do but it's not that bad but i would say what i've done is i drink a lot of water i have berries like raspberries blueberries they've got antioxidants in which is good for your skin take multivitamins moisturize exfoliate i feel like that's like the only things like taking care of your body and your skin then it's going to give it the best kind of it's going to be moist in it it's going to have the oils and it's going to it's going to shrink back as much as it possibly can but you're still gonna have loose skin and then also maybe not losing weight not losing those hundred pounds very very quickly so it gives you a time your skin enough time to shrink but even still you're gonna have some loose skin so you can't fully prevent loose skin the only way to get rid of loose skin is to have surgery to remove it you did say anything and i know i'm going to off the subject a bit but is your mum's house still haunted i was first fascinated by that story yeah my mum's house has been haunted from day since the day we moved there my mum's house has been haunted from there i haven't heard about anything recently happening at my mum's house but it's, it's just like things happen on and off there all the time so i'm sure like i'm going to my mum's on christmas so i'm sure she's going to tell me about something that happened it's more like every day something happens it's weird it's weird it's like maybe like once every couple of months like something will happen when would you say you first started seeing results during your weight loss and tips on how to stay consistent and not quit you're an inspiration merry christmas well merry christmas to you too and thank you um i will i said i started seeing results after the first week as in i started feeling better in myself i felt like i was losing weight and i'd lost like nine pounds on my first week because of a lot of water weight dropped and stuff like that as well the bigger you are the more weight you can lose in your first week just because you can hold on to a lot more water so i would say like i did start seeing results pretty quickly if you want to see like the physical changes of weight loss on my body if you haven't seen that video already i've literally got a video where i go through the pictures and show you how long it took for me to lose weight and show pictures of like week one to week three to week five to to the months and stuff like that and like how my body physically changed over that period of time i feel like that video is really good to just show you what my body looked like at different stages during my weight loss tips on how to stay consistent and not quit so i would say to keep reminding yourself of your why have a strong reason why keep picturing what you will feel like and how happy you will be and just picture the future your future self you're doing it for for her for you in a couple of months for you next year and try to just think about how worth it, it will be to just, just keep going and i'd say also to not try and take on too much all at once and to build in habits slowly over time and that way you're just more likely to be successful and then also track your progress make sure you have weekly or at least every two weekly check-ins with yourself so like that's a weigh-in 
and just like reflect over the week what you've done well what you haven't done well and kind of like make a plan of things that aren't going well like how you can fix that and then also have a way to hold yourself accountable like for me was having instagram i would post my weekly weigh-ins so it kept me accountable because i knew i'd have to post my weekly weigh-in and because i'd made it a routine of like every week i'd post my weekly weigh-in even if i'd had a week where i felt like i wasn't going to do well I would still post that way in because I didn't want to break my streak of like doing my way ins and that way it just kept me accountable. So I would say find a way to keep yourself accountable. It doesn't have to be like that, but just find a way, even if it's like checking in with a friend, you, you two are both losing weight and you check in with each other. Something like that. Just find a way to hold yourself accountable. How did you stay motivated when you were experiencing plateaus? I only experienced it a few times on my weight loss true plateaus and I would say it is very mentally hard especially when you feel like you're doing everything right but what I did was I just either I would increase my steps train a little bit harder increase my cardio or decrease my calories a little bit and I'd also make sure that I would track every single thing because sometimes we're not really in a plateau all we are is like we've slipped a little bit with like tracking or we're eating things here and there or we're not hitting our steps we're not training we're not doing the cardio that we were once doing so that's just how I did it and every single time like I switched something up by like adding in a little bit more or decreasing my calories a little bit I broke through it and sometimes we think we're on a plateau like a few times I thought I was in a plateau and really and truly I was just coming on my period and I weighed a little bit more that week so just stay patient and try to remind yourself to carry on doing the habits and to basically be really real with yourself and make sure that you're not slacking anywhere And then, yeah, just be patient and you'll eventually lose weight. Do you know what I mean? Like, it'll eventually come off. It's just sometimes our bodies like to stick in one place, you know what I mean? And we just have to push through it and you'll be fine. I promise, like, it's not, you're not going to be stuck in a plateau forever, especially if you're still overweight. You're not, and you're eating in a calorie deficit. You're not going to, it's not going to be stuck. You will eventually lose the weight. Are you ready to start dating again? (laughs) Maybe next year. (laughs) which is coming up real soon um yeah I've been I've enjoyed this year of being single um I'm really learning to be on my own and yeah I'm doing some healing maybe yeah next year I might who knows if you could only choose five exercises for the rest of your life what would they be walking spin is weightlifting an exercise that, that's not considered like one exercise but if, if I could I would do that but I know it's going to be a bit more specific so I'm going to say for the rest of my life walk in and spin definitely because cardio is good for the heart walk in that's also good for the heart and I reckon I could maintain my weight loss with just with just that with just walking so I would say walk in and spin and then weightlifting but obviously I'm going to have to break that down to, to exercises I'm going to say at least okay Barbell squats, because that's doing my legs and my butt as well. Deadlifts, I like deadlifts. So that includes Romanian deadlifts as well, and sumo deadlifts and barbell deadlifts. Hip thrust, because we've got to keep the booty. I'm sorry, my upper body's going to have to go. <laughs> I ain't worked this hard on my butt for it to dis- disintegrate. How have you found it mentally, switching your goals from losing fat to building muscle? Um, I found it really hard at first to change my mindset from okay, the scale's going down, I'm losing fat, to then, yeah, to building muscle and gaining body fat and the scale going up. That that switch was mentally hard. And I think it, it just took a little bit of time and, like, just experience, if that makes sense. Like, I had to push myself past feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I had to stop wearing myself so consistently because it did make me feel like, I should start reducing my calories. So every time, like, I would increase my calories, train a little bit harder. Yeah, I was building muscle, but then I'd see the scale go up a little bit and I'd I'd feel a little bit uncomfortable and I'd think, oh, maybe I've increased my calories too much and I kept decreasing my calories. And what that was doing was actually holding me back in the gym. I wasn't getting new personal bests. I wasn't building muscle because I kept reducing my calories. So I wasn't sticking to the plan, which was to gradually increase my calories and train to build muscle. So I, I had did have to stop weighing myself so consistently and just push past that uncomfortable feeling at first to then see that I wasn't actually going to regain all of my weight back I wasn't going to get fat just because my calories increased a little bit and my the scale was going up like it 
it, it had to be a bit of experience, if that makes sense. Like I had to give it some time to and see that I was actually feeling better in myself. I was feeling stronger. My lips were progressing and I was actually building muscle and I wasn't going to get fat overnight by just increasing my calories a little bit. So yeah, that's that's what I was saying. It was, it was difficult at first, but with time and experience and actually seeing the results is now like okay like I'm I'm good with it now like I, I find it a bit normal I'm able to be okay at gaining a little bit of weight and even a little bit more body fat than normal like right now I'm at a little bit more body fat than what I am in the summer and I'm comfortable with it because I know that I have the tools like I know how to reduce my calories and cut body fat if I want to like I, I know I can do that so I know I'm not gonna get to the size I was before all right so that's all I have time for today guys I hope I answered your question if I didn't I will do another Q&A soon so don't worry I will get around to answering your question I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please leave a like and i hope you guys have a lovely christmas enjoy christmas don't feel guilty for enjoying christmas and i'll see you guys soon take care bye